Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco, here for another episode. Uh, we've got another uh, wine here donated by WD3 from Frank Batchelor. Uh, this is the uh, Conde de Velasquez 2008 Cabernet Sauvignon from the Aconcagua, hey I got better at that, uh, Valley in Chile. And uh, we're going to do the rest of this week, we're going to uh, run through these wines um, that, uh, that he gave me. And uh, this was not one of the ones we did at the wine tasting, excuse me, uh, a couple weeks ago at um, Scenic Loop Cafe. So I'm excited to try this one. We're also having steak tonight for dinner, so I decided to do this is today's episode. This is uh, tomorrow's. <laughs> Doing a couple today. I got a, uh, <clears throat> got a Twitter thing going on tomorrow at lunch, so it makes it easier if I record both of these today and I can just upload in the morning for tomorrow. But um, so let's check it out. Uh, like I said before, uh, the Aconcagua Valley um, uh, produces, you know, a bunch of different uh, varietals. Um, <clears throat> the, uh, the 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 big thing about Chile in general is that they didn't they didn't suffer from phylloxera, so uh, that was uh, a good thing because they have all the original rootstock. So let's check it out. Okay, so on the nose, um, I'm getting I'm getting some cherry, and, and the tasting note said um, cherry and smoke aromas. I don't really get smoke as much as I'm getting kind of the tiger shop, um, maybe a little rubber, not in a bad way, but you know, getting a little bit of that. I don't really get a smoke aroma out of it, but I can see the cherries, maybe a little extracted, maybe a little candy-fied, um, and it seems like now I'm getting some hints of, of cocoa or chocolate, so... Not bad. Let's see how it tastes. Hmm. You know, um, I'm getting the cherries. I'm getting that cherry um, uh, flavor. Now I get the smokiness. Uh, that they talk about. So I wouldn't call it strictly smoky. I would call it more of like a barbecue type um, uh, feeling or, or flavor. Almost a barbecue sauce thing, but not quite because I can't imagine there being like a cherry barbecue sauce. But, you know, getting that getting that um, hickory or, or mesquite type of feeling like you're at the barbecue. I even get a little bit of pepper out of it, like almost jalapeno, which reminds me, and this is probably why I was thinking about this. Um, last night I went to Roaring Fork uh, for a tweet up uh, for Flicks and Food, and uh, it was uh, non Palmero's, um, uh, not Palermo, as I ha half the time I say his name wrong, but uh, non Palmero's uh, birthday was yesterday, along with Choco Loco. So uh, give him some little love here. Anyway, um, and uh, somebody I met uh, who's. Uh, doing a site called 210 TV here in San Antonio. Uh, she talked about, no, 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 no. No, I think it was Geek at Bits. Ah, uh, who was it? Anyway, had talked talk to me about uh, a jalapeno wine. Like, wine made from jalapenos, I'm assuming. You know, jalapenos are fruits, kind of. Yeah, I mean, they're not vegetables. So, they're supposed to figure out how to get me a bottle of that or, or how to find it. So, that was really interesting. So, like I said, I'm getting a little bit of almost like a jalapeno uh, flavor. It doesn't have a really long finish, but it's it's good enough. Um, it's real easy drinking. You don't get hit with tons of tannins. So um, I mean, it's, it'll pair well with with the steak because it'll be grilled, um, and you'll have that you'll have that flavor. Um, but it's not going to be like super tannins to try to like. Uh, handle the fat in the steak. So uh, it's real easy drinking. I, I don't have a price for it. Um, 
I'm going to imagine it's, it's going to be in the same six to nine dollar range by bottle uh, if you bought it, bought it retail, and because uh, this is being more probably of a, a restaurant wine, and um, it's it's pretty good, um, solid. It's it's nothing. I wouldn't I wouldn't say it's like over the top great. Um, so we're not in the ninety point range, so not not to disparage it, but um, I think it's a solid eighty six. I think that's what I gave the last one. Um, and uh, getting texts about fantasy football. Anyway, um, anyway, so solid 86. Uh, I definitely, totally would recommend it, uh, especially in the six to nine dollar range uh, per bottle, or if you found it at the restaurant, reasonably priced. Um, you know, about the same price range for for a glass. Um, it's probably going to be like a fifteen dollar or more, maybe twenty dollar bottle of wine at a restaurant. But you know, at a restaurant, you're going to spend more than you're going to buy. It's going to cost you more at a restaurant to buy a bottle than it is in retail anyway. So, I mean, if you have a nice little steak dinner coming or, or something like that, uh, I totally recommend it. And, uh, yeah, so what else? Um, you know, as always, friend me up, on, on, uh, friend me up on, the, on the social links over here. Send me emails. Oh, uh, I had a guy, uh, one of my newest followers on 1337 Wine, uh, he sent me a little reply this morning. He's from the Netherlands, and I'm looking up his tweet right now so I can tell you exactly what he said. But, um, so... Uh, he seems to be new to Twitter because he doesn't have very many um, uh, doesn't have very many uh, uh, tweets. But um, anyway, his, his name is MVDV1981, and um, that's those are his initials from what I can tell. And I'm assuming he might be born in 1981 or 81's a significant year for him. He's got this pimp car for a uh, for a uh, a logo. I don't know if you can see it very well, but it, it's got a nice little pink car there. Not a little, it's a big car. Looks like a pink Cadillac. Um, so, uh, it's pretty pimp. Anyway, so he, um, he sent me this, uh, this, uh, tweet. He goes, uh, what's with the name? Leet Wines? Aren't those wines lame? I'm assuming he's talking about wines that are this inexpensive. I'm trying not to use the word cheap. Now, there are some cheap wines, uh, but we'll say inexpensive wines, so good value wines. And my reply to him was, um, I was like, you know, if I can find a, a, a spectacular wine, say a 90-pointer or better, that's 10 bucks or less, I think that's pretty leet, don't you? I mean, you don't have to be a $100 bottle of wine to be leet. And I wasn't trying to be a jerk or anything on it. I, I was, you know, but, you know, it kind of got me thinking that, you know, I have people that, that might have this question of, like, they see the name leet wine, and they're thinking I'm, I'm reviewing... $60 wines, $80 wines, $100 wines, first growth from Bordeaux. It's like, no, you know what? Elite wine, it, it, it's meant to be an all-encompassing idea. And uh, if, you re if you read the about, you'll see that there's a thing about, you know, there's, there's an eventual goal to have a label. So, um, and, and the goal of that label is to, is to produce 20 to, you know, wines in the 20 to $30 range that drink for twice the price. So, um, anyway, that, that's years down the road if that ever happens. Uh, really glad you guys uh, joined in. Uh, make sure you friend me up. Make sure you let your friends know. Uh, get a good amount of views. And uh, I really appreciate it. We'll see you again next time.